in the first type of uh, Mendelian inheritance pattern group of diseases, which we call autosomal dominant, there are several factors which make them relatively unique. And as you know, uh, if you're heterozygous for uh, this uh, disorder, you have the disease. Um, sometimes neither of your parents have the disease, but it's a new mutation that appears in your genes. The autosomal dominant group of diseases in general have a fairly reduced penetrance. Uh, whether is this is due to environment or the presence of other genes, it's not really clear. But compared to the next group that we'll be talking about, the autosomal recessive, all five of these conditions are present, which are, I'm sorry, all four of these conditions are present which are generally the opposite with autosomal recessive. The autosomal, autosomal dominant diseases also have a very variable expressivity. The disease is very uh, non-uniform in uh, patients who have it. They very often, or as a rule, have a delayed onset where it may not appear until later in life. Autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease is a classical example of this. And in autosomal dominant diseases, there's usually uh, a reduced production or an inactive protein. And these are the features here, reduced penetrance, variable expressivity, delayed onset, and reduced production, which differentiate it from the autosomal recessive, what are generally the opposite in all these areas. But let's look at the list of common autosomal dominant diseases first. Uh, we're not going to go into these diseases in any uh, significant uh, uh, detail uh, here. Uh, they will be dealt with uh, in systemic uh, pathology. Uh, however, um, I think it would be very wise for you to know that if you hear diseases like Huntington disease or Huntington's chorea, neurofibromasosis, myotonic dystrophy, tuberous sclerosis, polycystic kidney, hereditary spherocytosis, von Willebrand's disease, Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndromes, multiple, osteogenesis imperfecta, achondroplasia, familial hypercholesterolemia, acute intermittent porphyria. These are all diseases, for the most part, which you can have. Perhaps we'll describe them a little bit later. Some of them we've talked about already. You can have all these diseases just from being heterozygous. And it would make sense in an autosomal dominant pedigree that both sexes would be involved. And because it only takes a heterozygous state to produce the disease, which are delineated as either red boxes for males or red circles for females, that generations uh, are not skipped. This is the classic pedigree for autosomal dominant diseases or autosomal dominant conditions of any type. Both sexes involved, generations not skipped. In contrast, the autosomal recessive diseases uh, occur only if the uh, patient, if the person, is homozygous for the gene. It has a much more uniform expression than autosomal dominant. Remember, we said autosomal dominant was a very variable expression. We said that autosomal dominant was uh, incomplete penetrance. Autosomal recessives are complete penetrance. I like to think they're complete penetrance because they have both genes. I would also like to think they have uniform expression because they have both genes. I would also like to think they get it earlier in life because they have both genes. And I would also like to think that uh, 
the proteins show a loss of function in general rather than being produced in smaller amounts or uh, defective. And remember, with autosomal dominant, we said new mutations can happen. Well, with autosomal recessive, because you need both of them, it's very, very rarely uh, clinical, uh, clinically um, happens. Uh, if you take the single largest group of genetic diseases, the so-called uh, inborn errors of metabolism, the lysosomal storage diseases, these are all generally autosomal recessive. So in general, autosomal recessive diseases are a lot more uh, common than autosomal dominant. And that's why we have two columns. So let's just say that once again, I think I would recommend that you generally know that all of these diseases are genetic diseases classically. We all know hemoglobin S is. We all know hemoglobin S uh, has uh, um, needs to be homozygous. Generally, the thalassemias are congenital adrenal hyperplasia, some forms of Ehlers-Danlos again, alkaptonuria, the neurogenic muscular atrophies, Friedrich's ataxia, spinal muscular atrophy, the glycogen storage diseases, hemochromatoses, alpha-1 antitrypsin disease, Wilson disease, lysosomal storage disease, homocystinuria, lactosemias, PKU, cystic fibrosis. These are all autosomal recessive diseases. Um, when you get to know a little bit about this, these diseases and you know how they're expressed, you be able to see that they have these uh, characteristics here, which make them generally uh, classical for autosomal recessive. And the pedigree can skip generations and of course both sexes are involved because it's uh, autosomal and it's not uh, X-linked or sex chromosome. Uh, so except for the fact that generations can be skipped here this is pretty much identical to the autosomal dominant. Of course the uh, in this case the affected uh, patient is uh, filled in in black and the woman is round like women should be, and men are more blocky in pedigrees. Okay, let's go to a relatively uh, shorter list now of the sex-linked. And as you know, in a sex-linked disease, only males are involved. It's only on the uh, X chromosome. And when it is paired with another X chromosome in a female, it doesn't happen, but they may be carriers. So an X-linked disease is only in men. His sons are okay. All his daughters are carriers because they get his X chromosome. And remember, the Y chromosome is not homologous to the X chromosome. Uh, in other words, the concept of dominant and recessive has no meaning in the XY chromosomes. And remember, heterozygous females have no uh, phenotypic expression of the disease. They are only carriers. Uh, I think it's a little bit more reasonable if I expected you to generally really recognize these diseases, although some of them we haven't talked about yet, as being sex-linked. Only males can get these diseases. Uh, if females have it, they're only carriers, and if men have it, their sons uh, can't possibly get it. Uh, Jerry's kids, you know, the two most common types of uh, muscular dystrophies, Duchenne and Becker, both of the common types of hemophilia A and B, a hemolytic anemia known as G6PD deficiency, an inherited form of absence of uh, antibodies called A-gamma globulinemia, Wiscott Aldrich syndrome, which is always described as eczema, thrombocytopenia, and immune deficiencies, diabetes insipitus, Lesh Nyan syndrome, uh, an error of uric acid metabolism uh, resulting in the buildup of uric acid, like in gout, and of course, 
the fragile X syndrome is only on the X chromosome as well. Let's call it a day for now. Bye.